Hey, what up? Shahi Chakar here again, We're talking about some more compound inequalities. Cause I love them. So here we have another and statement of a compound inequality. If you're not sure why it's an and statement yet, you may not even know that because when you get to the end, you'll see it. Once you graph it, it'll, you'll see it and it will be so awesome. So sometimes your teachers will give you super simple examples that uh, they do in class and then you get home and then you got something like this where it's got all these kind of just like different numbers inside of it like fractions, distributing, but the ones that they give you in class look like uh, go ahead and graph this, 7 is greater than x, okay? And then they send this home with you. So um, let's go ahead and let's see if we can assist you in being comfortable with doing stuff like this. Alright, now check this out. I can either do this two ways. I can rewrite this problem as two separate problems. For example, I could rewrite it as two thirds uh, distributing into the sum of 6x and 12 is greater than negative 9. Okay? Or, and um, I could also rewrite that same statement two thirds distributing into the sum of 6x and 12. Alright? Now, in this case, uh, this is less than 7. Does that make sense that it's less than 7? Because the alligator who's hungry, he's like, I'm hungry to eat. He's going to eat the 7 because the 7's bigger. What? You remember that from like, I don't know, like 4th grade or something? So, or whatever. And uh, so the case is the 7 is greater. So this is then less than 7. Now, why would I go ahead and set it up like this? Because I always love to have the variable on the left side. When I have the variable on the left side of the inequality, then it makes it way simpler for me to graph, okay? Because whatever direction the uh, arrow is pointing, then that tells me that's the direction I'm going to graph if I have my variable on the left side, okay? So I covered that in the previous video. So let's go ahead and let's work through this. If I'm going to distribute two-thirds into this, um, I can think, what is 2 times 6? And that's 12 divided by 3. Uh, is going to give me 4. So I've got 4x here, and then I, so that's distributing that there, and then I can distribute the, so it's the 2 thirds multiplying by 6, okay, and then 2 thirds multiplying by 12. Again, I can think that 2 times 12 is 24, divided by 3 is 8, so I have 4x plus 8 is less than 7, and then over here I can do the same kind of stuff with that distributive property. Um, I'm going to ha still have Two, well, once again, 2 times 6 is 12 divided by 3 is 4x, and then 2 thirds times 12, we've already done it here, is going to give me 8, so I'm going to have plus 8, is going to be greater than or equal to negative 9, okay? So then I can continue solving this problem. Here I would subtract 8 from both sides, that cancels out, and I've got 4x is less than, and in this case I have negative 1, and I would then, division property of equality, cancel that out, and I'm left with... Um, I'm left with x is less than uh, negative one-fourth, okay? Um, so, and some people sometimes make the mistake, and I want to draw a line to delineate the separation of that. All right, so, um, sometimes people make the mistake of like, oh, all of a sudden I've ended up with a negative, I'm supposed to flip my sign. Nope, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. The only time you ever flip your sign is if you have divided or multiplied your uh, variable by a negative and you flipped your sign, you flipped the value from a positive, from a negative to a positive on your variable. Okay, that's the only time you ever do that. Alright, so I'm going to finish this one out and hopefully I don't run into my carrier unicorn. So, I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. When I do that, I'm left with uh, 4x is greater than or equal to uh, negative 17 and then I could divide by 4 on both sides cancels out and I'm left with x is greater than or equal to negative 17 fourths which would be negative 4 and 1 fourth okay so if I'm going to graph these bad boys out alright so let's say over here I have 0 uh, let's say here I have um, negative 1 fourth and way over here I have negative 4 and 1 fourth okay um, this isn't the best way of doing it. I should actually have marked it as 4 and then done it a little past. Um, but we'll just roll with what we have. So from here, I say that uh, x is everything greater than or equal to, so it's a solid dot, uh, then ev everything greater than or equal to 4 and a fourth. So I'm uh, graphing this direction. And in this one, it's x is everything is less than um, negative 1 one fourth, but it's not equal to, so it's an open circle. All right, And that would show 
that there. Doing the same problem, which I know you want to see again, a different way, because if this doesn't work for you, then that's cool. Um, I'm going to do the same problem a different way, but it'll get, get us to the same answer. All right. So check this out. I can go ahead and just leave it just like it is, and I can go ahead and start um, solving it. So uh, I could distribute, once again, the 2 thirds could just multiply times the 6, multiply times the 12, um, or I could multiply, mm, I'm not going to give you too many ways of doing this. So I'd end up with 7 is greater than, greater than or equal to negative 9, and what I'd say is we had previously said that this would give me 4x, and this would give me, um, what do we say, 8? Because we had 24 divided by 3 is 8. All right? Now, I could just do it like this. And whatever I do, I do to all sides. Okay? So I can subtract 8 from here, subtracting 8 from all sides. All right? Hopefully that's making sense because it's the property of equality. Um, subtracting 7 minus 8 is going to give me negative 1 is greater than 4x, which is greater than or equal to negative 17. Finishing this out, I divide by 4, divide by 4, divide by 4, these cancel out. I'm now left with x is greater than or equal to negative 17 fourths, which we said was negative 4 and 1 fourth. And um, x is less than or equal to uh, negative 1 fourth over here. And that would graph the exact same way. So this was the answer that we found before. This is an and statement because the two... Um, uh, negative four and a fourth and one fourth are pointing in towards each other. Okay, so that's characterized as an and statement. All right, going the other way, not so much the other way. Giving a different example, sometimes we have or statements. Okay, so to give you one pretty meaty or statement, um, it would look like this. Again, this is an example of what you might expect to get in a homework assignment that. You solve by step one, write down the problem, step two, cry for an hour, and that's why I'm here, to help you not be crying for an hour, but we can go ahead and we can get through this together, because as I learned from Disney, we're all in this together, and moving on, um, I would go ahead and solve these piece by piece, all right? So I would first go ahead and look at this as 9x minus 6 is greater than uh, 12x plus 1. So I can go ahead and work this through. Um, I can go ahead and go, uh, let's see, I would minus 12x from both sides because I'm putting together like terms. Subtract 12x, not minus it, sorry about the terminology. So that cancels out and then I'm left with 9 minus 12 is, um, is negative 3. So I'm at negative 3x is greater than, uh, oh, plus I also want to add 6 to both sides. These cancel out, and so now I am at negative 3x is greater than 7. I want to isolate my variable, so I divide by negative 3, and what happens when I divide by a negative, when I have the variable? It flips my sign. So I'm at x, because these canceled out. x is less than um, negative 7 thirds, which I could rewrite as negative 2 and 1 third, okay? So that's one of my statements. My other statement on the or side is this bad boy over here. So in solving that one, which I will do in red, um, is I can go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides. These cancel out. And I'm at 4 minus 8 is negative 4 is greater than negative 2 fifths x. And if I'm looking at the idea that I want to isolate x, um, I have to, these are multiplying, negative two-fifths is multiplying times x, so I need to divide by negative two-fifths, and previously I've covered when you're dividing fractions, you multiply the reciprocal. So I'm multiplying, which I'll do in a different color, so I'm multiplying negative five-halves. I hope you can see that, negative five-halves, okay? And so these cancel each other out, but I have to multiply negative five-halves on both sides, okay? So now I'm at x, and I'll explain further there in a second. Uh, I can cross-cancel stuff, so, or you don't even have to do that. I could get positive 20 over 2, which gives me a positive 10, 
on this side. Now, I had a negative coefficient next to my variable. I've divided by a negative number or multiplied the reciprocal of a negative number. So now, since I flip the sign of my variable from a negative to a positive, I also flip this bad boy. So I'm like, boom! So instead of it being uh, this being greater than whatever x is, now this is less than whatever x is. And do you remember I previously said that it's beautiful to have your variable on the left side. So I'm going to move my variable to the left side. I'm going to rewrite it x over here, 10 over here. Now x, uh, we see that the alligator wants to eat the larger thing, which is the x, and I want to make sure that the alligator still gets to eat, so it's facing this direction. Now to graph this, okay? Let's say I have a number line. Okay, I've got a 0, I have 10, and let's say back here I have negative 2, and over here I have negative 3. Well, this is negative 2 thirds, all right? Being negative 2 thirds, um, negative, sorry, negative 2 and 1 third, uh, I'd go to negative 2 and 1 third, and I'd have an open circle over here, just under half. And over here I have an open circle at 10, okay? Because x in one case x is less than negative two-thirds, negative, man, x is less than negative two and one-third, blue, 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 and here I have x is greater than ten, blue, 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 and so the, uh, the area that we're covering, or the values of x, can be less than negative two and one-third, or uh, the values of x can be greater than ten. That is what an OR statement is. It either can be this or this, but not the stuff in the middle, okay? Which is different than an AND statement. So in this case, OR statements are always pointing out, AND statements are always pointing in, okay? So you're shading in towards each other on AND statements, you're shading away from each other on OR statements. I hope that is helpful to you, and I hope you have a great day, so peace!